So I was just alluded to, alluded to. As was alluded to. <clears throat> Hey guys, what's going on? Back again. This week, something very different, sort of. I mean, it's all part of the car, but this is something which I think intimidates and worries a lot of people, and that includes myself. Even, even as someone who comes from a background professionally, where this is quite the norm, not in cars, I haven't worked with car electrics at all, but I'm used to schematics, I'm used to sort of high density looms um, but in other industrial applications not so much in cars and it's is different it's the same 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 but different you know um, and so I'm gonna try and have a look at that try and make a video that's engaging compelling and interesting without getting too bogged down um, we'll just go, I'm just gonna go over the basic concepts of what how I'm planning to tackle this um, probably not the quickest way but it's the way that I, I think I feel comfortable and hopefully it will help break down that it's not completely like a black art. Hopefully, we'll see. Proof will be in the pudding. And I think there are you know, even people at a professional level who do all the fabrication and the mechanical work on their cars often look at this side of things and crap themselves. Um, so we'll look at some tools, we'll look at some diagrams, and yeah, just run through what I'm planning on doing and just start documenting a bit about what I'm doing, but you know, I'm not gonna make you sit and watch me scratch my head as I work out what I can and can't leave in this loom and hopefully what we can and can't combine from the two cars. Um, so I think without further ado, we'll have a little look at the tools that we're gonna use, the help or probably not help, as a case of you know small stringy things that fly around is not mandatory um, but they're quite cute and yeah tools diagrams and how we're going to tackle it so let's have a little look shall we right here then let's first off have a look at what i've discovered just by browsing through the two sets of wiring diagrams by the way quick apology if i sound a little horse which i call a pony uh i've got Lurgies at the moment, not the Lurgy, but a Lurgy. So my voice is a little. Um, and the other apology is if it sounds a bit sketchy, downside of working in the kitchen, my lapel mic picks up a load of interference from some of the many electrical items that are in my kitchen. So I'm using the inbuilt mic on my phone. So it might sound crap. Um, anyway, had a quick look. This is an overview of what we're removing and what we're keeping. As you can see from the Sleeker, we're basically removing everything um, except the engine wiring. Um, so all of these interior items are gone, or they're not, but they will be. You know, ABS, airbags, retaining all of them in the Yaris. They're already in there, they're wired, and they work with the motors, etc., that are in the car. So we'll keep them. The Aris, obviously we're taking the engine out, the engine wiring needs to swap for the engine ECU and the engine wiring from the Celica. The Yaris doesn't have an independent body ECU, it works on a more basic sort of logic system mostly. Uh, there is a bit of body ECU and it goes to the engine ECU, it's a combined unit. Hopefully we'll get away with just sacking that off. Um, again looking through it, most of it seems to be fairly sort of standalone and doesn't rely on the ECU. Concerns, Ooh. I am the wiring man. So, concerns so far, again, I've just been looking through. The immobilizers, always an issue. There's a transponder in the key, which key am I gonna use? I kinda wanted to use one key. Am I gonna end up having to use two keys? How's it gonna work? Mm -hmm. um, could be an issue. Immobilizer is always a pain backside as far as I know. I have discovered that the JDM car, this loom is covered in Japanese wiring tags and things. This is a JDM ECU and wiring loom and it differs in the way that it sends the speed signal to the clocks. I've already discovered this and the JDM car takes 
all the data from all four of the wheel speed sensors from the ABS and then sends that to the clocks. UK cars and the Yaris just use a traditional speed sensor that's on, on the gearbox and then sends that to the clocks. I don't know if that's going to stymie my plans to run the Celica clocks. We will find out. Finally, and sort of slightly more elaborately than it is here, the airbags have a wire which I know goes to the engine ECU in the Celica. And I'm really hoping that it's not something that, you know, basically stops the engine starting if the airbags are in fault mode or whatever. Um, I need to have a bit more of a look into that. Google isn't very helpful. Might just be a case of hoping. Um, the Celica does have a multiplexer, like a two wire link system that links everything together. And I'm hoping that the engine ECU doesn't actually rely on picking anything up from that. Maybe someone who's watching this will know better than I do and can let me know. If you could, that would be great. Please. Um, but yeah, that's that. Let's have a little look at wiring diagrams and tools quickly. So, this is about take five because I get a bit enthusiastic when it comes to tools. No innuendo intended. Let's try and make this brief but informative. The number one most important thing you need is wiring diagrams. These are legit Toyota ones. You can get them from Toyota. It's awesome. They are not scary. They look scary, but they're all broken down by system. They're really easy to follow. And they even tell you how to extract the pins, etc., from all of the different connectors they use. Awesome. So that's what you need. You need the exact wiring diagrams. A multimeter. You don't need fancy tools like I have. Like I say, I used to do this professionally. Not on cars, but industrial equipment. So just a multimeter so that you can get continuity, you can measure resistances, voltages, and current is helpful. Some kind of wire strippers. Again, these are really fancy. If you want to do a lot of this, highly recommend getting some of these strippers. They just make a really nice, neat job of it. And you can set your strip strip length so you know you can have a really repeatable crimping experience speaking of crimps these are too fancy but that's a really fancy crimp tool also expensive and you have to buy a positioner for the different crimps you use just an example when it comes to crimp tools please always get a set of ratcheting crimp tools with a proper set of jaws when you're doing little splice crimps using those red, like blue and yellow crimpers and crimps, do not buy those cheap and absolute dog turd, you know, plier ones with the really thin. They're just the worst things ever, please. These are not even that expensive. These are for like the Molex style pins, which you see on a lot of these factory sort of looms. Again, the, I think these are about 12 quid or something. You know, they're not expensive. Just get, it will just make everything so much better and less likely to fail and catch fire. These are extraction tools. These are like two quid on eBay and they do most automotive connectors. They are definitely mixed in the amount of success that you can have with them. But for these looms where you have to pop out a retaining clip and then just ping a little tang, I know that makes no sense, but they work really well. Um, it does vary by connector. Set of little flush cutters like these. Again, these are fancy ones. You can buy cheap ones. They'll do the job, but they probably honestly won't last. I've had these for years, and I've been through several sets of even like fairly reputably branded ones as well. But if you're just doing a bit of it, no drama. Random screwdriver for poking things. Some pens. Um, pens and highlighters are super useful when you're working with these diagrams. It means that I've been able to highlight everything that I've stripped out. I know exactly what's gone and what's still there. And I use the red pen to add anything that's missing from the drawing. I mentioned previously, the JDM card does seem to have some very slight differences and I've just marked them up on these drawings because these are UK car drawings. Finally, a scalpel. Scalpel is super useful, super sharp. Super easy to slice yourself open. So if you do get one, use it with care. But once you get the hang of using it, they're so good for 
removing bits of insulation, removing tape, stuff like that. You can use a Stanley knife, but this is just a lot more precise. And I think despite being sharp as anything, you're less likely to damage any cables. So that's the tooling. Oh, that's so pro tips. And it's just broken down system by system. Everything's clearly labeled. So this is the ABS ECU. You've got two connectors on it, which you can see when you look at it. And you've got connector A and you've got connector B and it gives you the pin number next to it. These are some inline connectors. And again, it gives you the pin number next to it. And when you flip over the page here, it gives you a page reference so you can see exactly where that connector is in the car and often a complete pinout of that connector. Really easy. The number one thing with wiring is not to get overwhelmed by it. It looks terrifying when you look at it, looks massively complicated, but you can just break it down bit by bit. So, you know, we're removing the ABS from the sleeker, don't need it. All you need to know is you just focus on, say, you want to take out this, this ABS speed sensor the front left hand one. You don't need to worry about the fact that it's the front left hand one, but you can just look at this connector. So you know it's on connector A and it's on pins eight and two. You can find them, you can extract them. You can trace those two just all the way through the loom. And in this case, where it's the speed sensor, the, the speed sensor and the connect, there's actually a connector by the speed sensor. It's all coming out. So you don't even need to extract anything at this end. You can just take that whole lot out, deepen it, in this case, highlight it so you know you've done it, and it's removed. Then you can move on to the next one. This one, it goes via a connector, so you can just pull out. You go, oh well, connector A, pin 3, to IE5, pin 15. It's all broken down for you, and you just focus on that one wire. Take that out, then you move on to the next one. And you just work through like that. Rather than looking at it as an overall picture, just break it down into small chunks and just focus on it little by little and you'll be fine. Let's have a little look at the work itself in the loom. So I'm gonna just time-lapse me doing a bit of loom stripping and then you can sort of see what's involved. So let's have a little look at that now. there was 29 minutes in 29 seconds probably less by the time I've edited this and we removed two cables there's actually a third one uh, that goes into the ECU box so I've got to crack that open to get it out but I think the point here is that this is a long process um, but it's not it's not a simple one so this will be going on in the background the whole time um, I basically just wanted to make this video. This is such an important part of the build. So, it will be going on in the background the whole time. I'm not gonna make a whole video about it and I'm definitely not gonna get it done this week. I've got some time off work coming up soon, so we'll be looking to make the chassis mods then um, and do a bit of that while we do this in the background. I know I've sort of skimmed over it. it is fairly simple in principle but the reality is like with anything i don't know the internal architecture of this and there is a possibility that the ecu is just going to crap itself because it's not talking to the multiplexer and it's missing inputs from the airbag ecu and things so as was alluded to at the beginning of this video i have had the lurgies still have a little bit of the lurgies uh, for a substantial portion of this week, which has meant some slight detriment to this week's video, as you probably may or may not have noticed. Maybe you loved it, maybe you loved a brief overview of the wiring, but I haven't been able to include everything I wanted to. Normal service will resume next week, I promise. So don't, don't be disheartened. Please still like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, feel free to drop back and watch a few of the other videos. 
to see how we got to this point. Um, next week, I'm going to start looking at the Yaris and pulling the engine out of that. So that's going to be back to some destructive and interesting stuff. I was hoping to do that this week. Um, however, being ill has given me a little bit of time to have a little think. And the more I think about it and the more I've played with that loom, the more I'm thinking that it's just not going to be happy. You know, it's, it, the Celica loom runs in a multiplexer system where everything talks to one another. And I am fairly sure it's going to be unhappy uh, if it's not got that comms link to the rest of the car. Um, whether or not I try it, I don't know. I'm going to reach out and ask a couple of people if I can find some help but what is more likely i think is a standalone ecu you can get them relatively easily and all i'll do then this isn't in vain this work is still relevant all i'm going to do is i'll keep stripping that loom back once i have an engine loom it means that i can chop basically the ecu connector off i will then pin it to a connector in the engine bay and then run the loom into the car and just have that way it's really nice, you can just disconnect in the bay and pull the engine if you ever need to um, and then just build a little section of loom between the ECU and the, in the engine bay connectors and we'll have a look at how we do that at the time because there are a few bits and pieces that I think need looking at. But for this week, again, apologies if you didn't find it too interesting, apologies if it's a bit short and apologies if it's a bit full of the old waffle. but. We'll be back at it next week. Um, so until then, take care of yourselves. And uh, yeah, 